In previous videos, we learned about buffers, and we also learned that when a strong acid or strong base is added to a buffer, the buffer resists changes in pH. However, even though the buffer resists changes in pH, it will still experience a small pH change when acids or bases are added. In this video, we will learn how to calculate the pH of a buffer solution after addition of a small amount of a strong acid or a strong base. This is done in two parts. In the first part, we do a stoichiometry problem with a one-directional arrow since we're working with either a strong acid or a strong base. In the stoichiometry problem, we look at the reaction between either the strong base with the weak acid from the buffer or the reaction of a strong acid with the conjugate base of the buffer component. This allows us to find the new amounts in moles of the weak acid and the conjugate base components of the buffer. In the second step, we do a typical equilibrium problem with an equilibrium arrow and an ice table showing the usual ionization equation for the weak acid and the conjugate base components of the buffer. The only difference is that the initial amounts for the weak acid and the conjugate base will come from the stoichiometry problem that we just discussed. Let's see how to find the pH change in a buffer when we add either a strong acid or a strong base. In the first part, the stoichiometry part, we'll work with a buffer solution that we previously worked with. It's the acetic acid sodium acetate buffer solution in which we have 0 0.100 moles of each component. If we were to add a strong acid to this buffer solution, the hydrogen ion from the strong acid would react with the acetate ion conjugate base to produce an increase in the amount of acetic acid. However, if we were adding a strong base to this buffer solution, the hydroxide ion would react with the acetic acid component to produce an increase in the amount of sodium acetate present. Let's assume for this problem that we're adding 0.025 moles of a strong acid to this buffer system. When we do that, that will cause the conjugate base moles to decrease by that same 0.025 amount and the moles of the acetic acid to increase by that 0.025 amount. We can illustrate this with a table so that we have the hydronium ion or the H plus concentration reacting with the acetate ion to produce the acetic acid. Before we add any acid, we did not have any of the H plus present. We did have 0 0.100 moles of the acetate and we had 0 0.100 moles of the acetic acid. We add 0 0.025 moles of the H plus and after that addition we have zero amount of the hydrogen ion since it gets used up in the reaction. We have 0 0.075 moles of the acetate ion since 0 0.025 moles of that acetate was used to react with the H+. As a result, we have an increase of 0 0.025 moles of the acetic acid product to give us a final amount of 0 0.125 moles of the acetic acid. It's important to note that this kind of table is not an ice table because we are not working with an equilibrium system. We have the one directional arrow showing a one-way reaction. Now that we know the amounts of the acetate ion and the acetic acid present after addition of the strong acid, we can do the equilibrium problem. We set up the usual ice table showing the reaction or the ionization equation of the acetic acid with water to produce the hydronium ion and the acetate ion. The difference is that for this ice table we'll use the amounts of the acetic acid and the acetate ion that we determined from the stoichiometry problem in a previous slide. Therefore, for the initial amount of the acetic acid, we have 0.125 moles. For the hydronium ion, we have 0. And for the acetate ion, we have 0.05 moles. The acetic acid will decrease by x, the hydronium will increase by x, and the acetate ion will increase by x in this equilibrium system. At equilibrium, we have a concentration of acetic acid of 0.125 minus x, but since x is small, 
we'll assume that that amount at equilibrium is 0.125 moles. For the hydronium ion, we'll have an equilibrium concentration of x, and for the acetate ion, we'll have an equilibrium concentration of 0.05 plus x, or, assuming x is small, 0.075. We can now plug those equilibrium amounts into our Ka expression. So we have Ka equals x times 0.075 divided by 0.125, which is equal to the Ka for acetic acid, which we recall is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We can then solve for x, so x is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0.125 divided by 0.75, which gives us a value for x, which is a hydronium ion concentration of 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5. When we turn this into a pH, we get pH equals negative log of 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5, or the pH of this solution after the addition of 0.025 moles of strong acid is 4.52. While this is a small change from the pH of 4.74 before we added the acid, it's still a relatively small change based on the amount of strong acid we added. After watching this video, you should be able to differentiate between the stoichiometry step and the equilibrium step used to find the new pH after adding a strong acid or strong base to a buffer solution. You should also be able to use the stoichiometry step combined with the equilibrium step to calculate the pH of a buffer after addition of a strong acid or a strong base.